see, this is me, right? A lot of people, when discoveries, big time discoveries, different things are made, a lot of people are so awe and awe of the discovery, and then that's where it stops. But that's not me. And I, I guess that's the reason why I've been traveling down this road for the longest. Is because I'm I'm like into the story of what what happened. What what's the backstory here? What does this mean? Like that's what I get caught up in. You when you make a discovery of a tomb or something, okay, why was he buried here in this specific location? What was the story? Was it good? Was it bad? He was bad, he was buried here because he did something wrong. Like I'm a I'm drawn to the story as well as the discovery. So it's not just one for me, right? And this video here is the saddest things ever discovered by archaeologists. Let's check it out. When it comes to archaeology, the overall impression that you get from it when you hear about discoveries is that of awe and wonder. For example, you hear about how ancient dinosaurs have been found that weren't discovered previously, or maybe about ancient cities and tombs that have been unearthed after centuries or a millennia. And you think, well, that's cool, and it is. Archaeology is cool, and these discoveries can help to change the world in some respects. However, that doesn't mean there's not a darker or even more sad side to these kind of findings. I mean, after all, not all of history is empires and majesty. There are plenty of victims that get found and need to be sympathized with. With that all being said, here now are the 20 saddest things ever discovered by archaeologists. Number 20. Eruption Victims. I'm going to go right for the heart with the first one as it highlights how it has- I was just thinking about the same thing. He came out the gate swinging, didn't he? Eruption victims? Jeez, yeah. These, these definitely pose the question I, I brought up at the beginning of the video. Victims. I'm going to go right for the heart with the first one as it highlights how a historic finding can come with some incredibly tragic baggage. Undoubtedly, one of the greatest archaeological findings in history is that of the lost city of Pompeii. This was a city that was covered in ash and volcanic material when Mount Vesuvius erupted unexpectedly. There have been many movies and films and shows and such that have recounted the events of that dreadful day or have tried to put their own spin on things, but unless you look at the actual findings in the city, you don't really get to experience the horrors that occurred. For example, in 2020, there was a villa uncovered just outside of Pompeii that apparently survived the initial assault from the volcano, only to be wiped out in a second blast that happened the very next day. Now, if you thought an eruption was a one-off, well, it wasn't. It killed at least two people in its second strike. Specifically, this wealthy man and the slave that he owned, they were found locked in place due to the events of the eruption, and in this case, that referred to the thermal shock that had swept over them and caused them to die in such a way that left their hands and feet clenched. In short, they were in agony when they died, and based on the positioning of the bodies and what we know about the eruption, they were trying to get to a safe space in the villa to try and be shielded from the blast. But instead, the eruption just followed them into the house, and it killed them via the heat and debris. The truly sad part is that these are hardly the first victims of their kind that have been found in Pompeii and the surrounding areas that Vesuvius affected. Even poets were moved by the horrors and tragedy of the people that remained in place and were buried by the volcano. These were people that were just living their best lives for better and for worse. And when the volcano came along and destroyed everything, it's hard not to be swayed by that. Number 19. The Children of Yuya Yako while the last one was tragic, you could argue that at least it was a natural disaster that led to those people's demise, so it was a random event if nothing else. However, with the children of Yuya Yako, it's another story entirely. The three children of this tale did not choose death, it was well and truly forced upon them, and that should make all of us quite sad and angry. The name comes from the dormant volcano mountain that they were found on, which is on the Argentinian and Chile border. Once upon a time, three children were put in a hole in the ground within the mountain summit so that they could serve as a sacrifice to the gods. And to be clear, they were quite alive when they were placed into that hole. 
The only reason they didn't resist when being put in there is that they were all drugged up, which is an entirely different level of sadness to invoke if you ask me. The people who did this to the children were the Incas, who had one of the most dominant empires in South America, and yet, despite all of their power, they were beholden to their beliefs and to their gods, which means that they did human sacrifice quite often. If see, see, see that? You hear that? See, when I be sitting around the house and having discussions with people and we talk about how bad things are right now, th think about what they just said and what happened to those children and the times they were living in back then where this was considered the norm. Like, I know I talk time machines and traveling back in time, but a fear of mine is if we ever do get to the point where we can travel back in time, a fear of mine is getting stuck in one of these times or, or something like that where they do some really heinous things to people. Like, seriously. In fact, child sacrifice is something they did to commemorate events, both big and small, and then they would do other sacrifices if they felt it was needed in order to please the gods, such as when a famine broke out. To sacrifice as many people as they could, including small children, just to try and win favor from gods, is a sad practice that just as sadly has been practiced by many peoples over the years. Thankfully, it's been mostly done away with, but when you see the almost scaringly preserved bodies of the children, you have to wonder what they would have been like had they been able to live their lives. Number 18. The Ice Princess of Siberia while all of these stories are sad in their own way, it's important to provide context and state that some of these findings have helped us to peel back the layers of history to see what had came before and what else may be found. For example, there's the Ice Princess of Siberia, one of the most important findings ever discovered within Russia in the last century or so. So, she was a woman who had lived all the way back in the 5th century and was found in a special sealed-up burial chamber in 1993. The Ice Maiden was a representative of a culture that had thrived between the 6th and 2nd centuries BC in the Siberian steppe, and that alone makes her important to have been discovered. But there's more to it than that. Remember, she was found in a burial chamber, and you want to know what that was like? Well, inside of the maiden's tomb was her coffin, which was made out of a solid larch wood tree trunk that was decorated with leather appliques and depicted figures of deer. The chamber was also containing two small wood tables with tray-shaped tops, which were used to serve food and drink, and they had food for her and her horses down there to feast upon, apparently in the afterlife. The sad part may be how she died. After doing some new research in 2014, it was found that she might have had breast cancer, which was compounded by a fall that she had which led to her dying in the age of 30s. Just as important, based on all of the items in the chamber, it's believed that she might have been a person of high standing within her own culture, possibly even a priestess. Dying younger than one should is always sad, but perhaps through her loss, we can learn more about her people that had come before. Number 17. The Franklin Expedition As history has proven to us, just because something well-intentioned or even well-prepared occurs, it doesn't mean it's going to go well. We can all look at multiple ventures through parts of the world to see just how badly things went and hope that such a thing will never happen to us in the future again. One such disaster was the Franklin Expedition, which was a two-ship venture that was supposed to go through the Northwest Passage. The area is this part of the Arctic that connects Europe to Asia. There had been expeditions to the area before, and this was supposed to be the final one. And the two ships, the HMS Rebus and the HMS Terror, were stocked to handle the Arctic temperatures and anything else that might have been thrown at them. But instead, the ships were lost and all of the crew died in the expedition. To this day, nobody still fully knows what exactly happened in this situation, and that's sad enough. But then when you look at expeditions that have come after to find the crews in the ships, well, that's when things get even more sad. When people have gone to look for the crew and find out what happened, details have pointed to weather and bad luck leading to many of the deaths of the men. Then, when notes from one of the ships were found, it seemed as though things just kept on getting worse, to the point where they were even engaging in cannibalism. When some of the bodies were exhumed for testing, it seemed to imply that poisoning of the lead variety may have led to part of the crew's death. 
This was one voyage that was truly doomed from the beginning, and the answers are still out there just waiting to be found. However, with the Arctic Circle melting because of global warming, one has to wonder if we will ever get the fullness of the truth. Whew, well, you gotta resort to cannibalism, bro. That's that means you're 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 desperate, man. For some people, for some people, they may start there before they try it. Anything else, you know what I mean? You're like, bro, so you always wanted to do this? But, man, that's that's when you know it's it's bad. It's, it's, oh, bro, that's, oh, I never, oh, knock on wood and anything else I can knock on to just, you, you never want to be put in that type of situation. Number 16, The Bog Men. What may be truly sad to ponder is that certain actions by humanity have not stopped despite being alive for tens of thousands of years. For example, people have been killing each other for ages, and it doesn't seem to ever want to stop. Equally as disturbing is that people have gotten rather clever over the years with how to dispose of bodies that they've killed so that they can't be caught. For example, two famous victims were found in a peat bog in Ireland meaning that while they were perfectly contained for a long time, their killers had likely gone free, and when they were rediscovered a while later, they were perfectly preserved and able to be studied. The first one of these bog men to be found was discovered in 1950 by a woman who was cutting up the peat with her spade, and after accidentally striking the dead man, she then pulled him out to find just how lifelike that he still was due to that peat preserving his body in a creepy and effective way. After doing some research, it was believed that the man was killed for ritualistic reasons, perhaps even like the Incas, they were killing him to please the gods. But he wasn't the only one that was found in such a place. In 2003, peat cutters found men in two different other bogs, and these guys were definitely not treated well before their deaths as they had been mutilated in a variety of ways before being placed in the bogs. But why put them there at all? Well, the answer might lie in not only the peat bogs themselves, but the fact that the bogs hold a special place in the hearts of those that live there. They are seen as a special part of nature and are often rather remote in their location. So if you did need to get rid of a body, it would be the perfect place to dump it without people looking into it. The perfect cover, as it were. Thankfully, we are now finding these bodies, and some of them are even being honored by being placed into museums. Number fifty. Like, we hear them use that reasoning as to why things were done like this. Often it was to please the gods, to please the gods, to please the gods. You know? And maybe a lot of that was true, but not all of that could have possibly been true. That's my guess. So I feel like a lot of them, or some of them, used it as an excuse to do some of the heinous acts that they did to people back then. Oh, we're just doing this to please the gods, knowing it wasn't to please the gods at all. 15. Vampire Body Another sad thing that hasn't really changed in humanity is the need to satisfy supernatural fears. After all, for countless centuries and millennia, people have feared everything from other tribes to monsters and gods and everything in between. So naturally, that's led to people being accused of being things that they weren't, and we all remember about the Salem witch trials, right? Well, if we want to go a bit further back into history to see just how troubled the people were about such things, you'll have to only look at places that did vampire burials. For example, in Poland, a woman who was believed to have been a vampire was buried in such a way that they placed a sickle above her head. They did that because if she did return to life and then tried to get up, that sickle would then cut her head off. As if that wasn't enough, they placed a padlock on her grave to try and ensure that she wouldn't be able to get out of the coffin. So meticulous, these vampire hunters were. Sadly, the woman was hardly the first victim of such an action. In fact, there were times when vampire hunts went on simply because a large amount of people were dying via an unknown disease, and they felt that they were being taken out by someone close to them, or even a monster that had lurked among them. Very or we just needed somebody to blame. And hey, you fit the description of what could possibly or potentially be a vampire, you're an easy target to blame. That could have been the case too as well. Various kinds of vampire burials have been discovered over the years, with some of them getting pretty brutal in regards to how they tried to keep the vampire in the ground. For example, one body was even found with a giant rock shoved in its mouth, presumably because if the vampire did awaken, it wouldn't be able to bite down. 
you know, because it had a rock in its mouth. On the one hand, we've stopped accusing people of being witches or vampires, but on the other, we accuse people of various other things that make the accusers so much more monstrous than the things that people were trying to fight off in the past. Number 14. Coffin Birth and now it's time for a real horror story and some nightmare fuel for you. Now, this tale takes place in the 7th or 8th century, featuring a young pregnant woman who had sadly died. Due to her death and the fact that she was presumed to not be able to give birth to the child that was still inside of her, they then buried her outside of a town in Italy. Well, you see, when she was exhumed in 2010, her body was researched at her gravesite. What they found inside were actually two sets of bones, specifically the bones of the mother and the bones of the child that she had apparently given birth to inside of the coffin. How does a dead woman give birth to a baby that's still inside of her? Well, when we die, decomposition does happen, and that makes it so that gases inside of our body grow and expand. After a while, they can exert enough force to actually move a large object from the womb into the world, or in this case, into the coffin. This phenomenon has sadly been found multiple times around the world, and when you add that this woman had a rather mysterious death that was punctuated by a literal drilled hole in her head, you have to wonder if people just didn't bury her simply to get rid of her in order to hide what had happened to her before. Number 13. Shackled Bones When it comes to mass graves, they are far more common than you would expect. After all, there are truly multiple reasons for such a burial to take place in the world, whether we want to point them out or not, and places like necropolises were full of bones of many people. Fast forward to 2016, and a very odd mass grave was found in Greece. The 80 bodies that were in it seem to have come from around 632 BC, and there were multiple oddities attached to the bones themselves. First, the people all seem to have been killed in the same way, implying that it was a mass execution event. Some note that this may have been an attempt at a coup that had failed, and thus they were all killed for their actions, a common practice in ancient times. Secondly, all of the skeletons were found shackled, which is not exactly something that you find in graves like these. Instead, you often find that with slaves or criminals, but archaeologists suspect that there's more going on here than that. The reason is because they feel that these people, regardless of who they were, were treated with respect in both death and burial, which is kind of odd to say out loud when you hear that they were executed and shackled in their graves. Still though, if nothing else, it also proves that honor lives on, even when it has to deal with the death of another. Number 12. Leprosy Medicine is one of the biggest things that we should all be thankful for in our modern world. I mean, after all, in ancient times, they didn't have anything close to what we do now. As such, people who had illnesses like leprosy were deemed to be outcasts and had to be exiled from populations because they would and could infect others if they weren't careful. The irony was that you could treat the disease if it was found early enough, but nobody really knew how to treat it back then, so a lot of people died and that is a large tragedy. Fast forward to these days, and the bones of certain leprosy victims have been found and analyzed against the modern variants that still exist in the world today, and due to that, scientists are able to determine how people actually helped to spread the disease and how it changed over the years. For example, they were able to determine that leprosy was in Asia 4,000 years ago, and then, likely through things like the Crusades, it traveled around to places such as Europe and the Middle East. In fact, that same strain in the Middle East that was going wild in 2013 is the one that had hit Europe a thousand years before. As a disease, the, the DNA of leprosy has not really changed. That just goes to show how prevalent these diseases can be and how hard they can be to get rid of. See, and, and that be making me think of things like a lot of these ones, these different diseases that happened back in the day, do y'all think they're going to make a comeback? And in, 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 a, in a way that where it's, it's sort of like 2020. Now, my fear is when a lot of the ice starts to melt during the global warming that we see a lot of those things resurface and spread and, and, and everything like that. And the reason why I ask that is because I don't feel like we're prepared. It's not in our, in our field of vision right now. We're so focused on so many other things that we're not thinking about that. And by the time it happens, it's like we'll just be reactive. So 
I just don't see it ending well, boating well for us. Number 11, The Bound Mummy. Here's one that is equally sad and weird all at the same time. In Peru, archaeologists were able to uncover a mummy that appeared to be about 1,200 years old. Now that alone would make it a big scientific discovery, but things get even more weird when they look at the body and notice that it was not only covering its own face, but was bound in rope. As you can imagine, that raised all kinds of questions. Why did it cover its face like that? Why was it bound up in so much rope? And if the person was a criminal, why were they found in a burial chamber? Nobody has the answers, and so it continues to be a sad situation. Number 10. The Headless Torso Ready to get weird and wild all at the same time, specifically Wild West? This is the tale of a man named Joseph Henry Loveless. He was an outlaw in 1916, and after killing his wife and escaping from jail, he then went on the run. Fast forward some years later and he was discovered in a cave with several body parts missing inside of a burlap sack. Yes, it's real, he had a headless torso, he was missing his hands, and nobody could identify him at first because of those missing parts. Eventually, a DNA test of his descendants would lead to his discovery, and yet nobody knew who had killed him or why he was disposed of in such a violent way. We can just put it on karma. We just say karma got him. That's, that's what I was thinking anyway. Hey. Number 9. Mass Vampire Grave In Poland, the country where the last vampire burial site was, there was found another mass burial site for people who apparently had vampiric relatives. But this time, they didn't only put items in the caskets to try and ensure they didn't resurrect. Oh no, there were signs that people straight up dug up their loved ones and decapitated them themselves. They did that to their own dead family members to try and ensure a vampire curse was truly gone. I mean, wow. The fact that this was done so many times to so many bodies speaks volumes, but it also highlights how things have evolved over the years. Today, we may laugh at the idea of someone being a vampire, but back in those times, it was basically a death sentence to even be thought as one. Number 8. Prehistoric Massacre As noted earlier, people have been finding reasons to kill people for quite a long time. But what may surprise you is how long big battles and deaths have been happening. In Kenya, the bones of 27 people were discovered, and many of them were actually found to have been heavily broken, indicating a violent altercation had gone down. Multiple skeletons were found to have been pierced by items in a lethal way, confirming that this was a massacre of some sort. The bones themselves were then traced back to around 10,000 years ago, and some say it could be signs of a truly violent battle that happened way back then. There's some dispute about whether this was a true massacre, but one thing's clear, people died in the attack, and regardless of the year or the reasons, the loss of life is always a sad thing. Number 7. Ancient Mass Graves Here's one that's both sad and a little bit funny at the same time. Sad because some mass graves were discovered in England and may have been full of ancient prisoners. It's funny because it was discovered at a university when they were trying to expand the premises a bit, and perhaps they rethought that expansion upon discovering these graves. It took place in 2013 when not one but two mass graves were found at the university, and research immediately went on to figure out what was happening. The number of skeletons in the grave were 1,700, and they were apparently Scottish soldiers during one of the civil wars in England. They had been there for hundreds of years without ever being discovered. What's sad was that these prisoners were not well treated, and upon their death they were simply tossed into a mass grave, hopefully to never be seen again. Number 6. The Juanita Mummy Sadly, we have another human sacrifice story to tell you, and it's one that involves the Incas. This time around, I'm talking about the Juanita mummy, which refers to a young woman about the age of 12 to 15 who was placed into a cold mountain cavern in the Andes, sealed away, and then would not be discovered again until 1995 when a chance encounter during a trip up the mountain revealed the bundled up young girl. What amazed the climbers and those who had studied the mummy afterward was that Juanita was quite well preserved many hundreds of years after her death. 
That was due to the cold conditions she was in and the place that she was likely sealed in to be sacrificed. Since her arrival, Juanita has been studied heavily and placed into museums in multiple countries. I can only imagine what she would have thought of that. Number 5. Wartime Grave Here's another mass grave story, but with a more modern twist. In 2022, outside of a Dutch city, a group of 80 or more soldiers were found inside of a mass grave. These soldiers were then traced back to the 18th century when they were apparently getting treated in a field hospital, and that's when they died. But all four of them in the grave were found to have been from England. There were two wars there in the 18th century, but only one involved British soldiers. The Flanders Campaign of 1793-95 to against France and German soldiers from Hessen and Hanover worked closely with the British during that campaign. Surely enough, during that time period, there was a field hospital near the town that the mass grave was found, and it's believed that conditions of the hospital were so bad that it helped to expedite some of the deaths. Number 4. Greek Sacrifice as I said, human sacrifice is something that a lot of ancient cultures have tried to do to please the gods, and in this case, we have a skeleton that may have been an ancient sacrifice to the god Zeus. We can point to Zeus specifically because of how the body was found at an altar that was specifically made for the Greek god of lightning and the highest god in the Greek pantheon. The body itself was found to be that of a teenager, and there's still plenty of mysteries that surround it, including why that teen was sacrificed to Zeus in the first place. However, most would agree it's a sacrifice because it was found on the altar and not in a grave or in a chamber of some kind. Number 3. Aztec Tower of Skulls well, there's a name that'll get your heart pumping as you try to figure out what kind of horrifying experience that you're about to partake in. Sadly, this was a literal title for something that was found beneath Mexico City. The tower itself was discovered in 2015, and from that point, they have continually tried to figure out just how many skulls truly were part of the tower. To people's shock, the number keeps growing. By 2020, they had found over a hundred more skulls that were part of the tower. The tower itself was part of a chapel that was dedicated to one of their gods, and the skulls were part of human sacrifices they had made over the years to please those gods. Since there were hundreds of them attached to the tower, well, that adds up to a whole lot of sacrifices. Number two. And then my thing is, back then, I wonder if the people being sacrificed were just, like, like eager for, the, for it to happen to them. Eager to be sacrificed. Like... Probably because you're you're growing up knowing that this is going to happen. You're prepared for it. You're given reasoning as to what it is and how and why. And this is what it's supposed to be. So you probably were. Two, the pregnant mummy. <laughs> I told you about one pregnant mummy from before, but this one is a much different thing to wrap your head around. In Egypt in 2021, the remains of a mummy were examined, and upon looking at the mummy, they could tell that it was pregnant. Not as in the mummy itself was about to give birth, but that the woman who was mummified had a child, and they allowed that child to be with the mother even in mummification. The irony is that this mummy in question was donated to scientists, but it was supposed to be a male. Regardless of its dubious origins, it is a real mummy, and the fact that it was mummified in a pregnant state raises a whole lot of questions including whether there's another one like it out there. Number 1. The Tombs of the Pyramid Builders The mystery of how the Great Pyramids of Egypt were built remains one to this day. However, there are clues that can be parsed out from everything. One such clue comes from the tombs that the pyramid builders were actually put into as they passed. According to the findings, they were actually paid laborers who had worked in shifts around the span of three months and given both a proper burial and a good selection of food to keep them energized as they worked. This does help to repaint the picture of how many believe the work on the pyramids went. What's sad about this is that the mystery still isn't solved to this day, and there are many workers who likely died before they even got to see the finished project. That's all from the realm of archaeology and how some of the findings that are made are not all that happy and wonderful as one would expect. Were you saddened by some of the discoveries that were made? And which of them do you feel was the most sad?